All right, everyone, story time with Carlos Osrita. How Donald Trump thinks compared to our Western allies. Norway is working on a guided ramjet artillery round that will have a range of 93 miles. Trump fast-tracked a program that will give the U.S. guided artillery rounds with a range of 1,150 miles. 1,150 miles. From the article in Popular Mechanics, the cannon, along with hypersonic weapons, will allow the service to attack long-range strategic targets far beyond the reach of existing army systems. When you fire an artillery round, the enemy tries to destroy your cannon using counter-battery fire. In this case, the terrorists fired at a U.S. base and the American counter-battery fire destroyed their position. All right, let's take, a, let's take a quick gander at this. No sound, but I don't think you need it. All right, it's kind of blurry. I always try to look at these Carlos Osuita videos. Sometimes it's hard to tell. Carlos is one of his superpowers is that he's incredibly observant, like literally like Sherlock Holmes. Okay, this is three minutes and seven seconds. You can go watch the video in the description. Okay, moving right along. By having a cannon that fires around 1,150 miles, we can use artillery that's based in another country. And Trump has requested that the weapon be in service by 2023. Guess what? It'll happen faster. The pandemic created a public-private partnership that won't go away. We're now capable of creating new everything at warp speed. NAMO, the Norwegian Finnish company making the ramjet artillery round is half owned by the government. That's the worst case scenario. Imagine Barack Obama micromanaging weapon development. The problem with governments is that they insist on putting their stamp on something like dogs peeing on fire hydrants. I've spoken about the Nazi Dornier DO-335 before. It was a single set fighter bomber. Single jet, maybe? Sure, the push-pull configuration was unusual, but it doesn't look too crazy, right? Well, I am not qualified to comment on this photo, but there it is. Here's the problem. The propeller on the tail required a fin on the underside to prevent the propeller from hitting the ground on takeoff. The fin required the longest standing gear ever put on a fighter. A six foot tall man could walk under the aircraft without ducking. Let's, let's look at these here photos. There's one. And there's another. Because the DO-335 was so tall, it couldn't be serviced. Simply refueling it, working on either engine, or cleaning the windshield required a 10 foot tall gallows made of wood. There were no gantries to replace the engines. The pilot had no rear view. The maintenance doors for the rear engine were so huge that the fuselage had to be massively strengthened to keep the aircraft from twisting and disintegrating in flight. It was the stupidest aircraft ever built, but Hitler wanted it. That is what the government does. A watercolor artist makes technical decisions for aircraft. We're at full steam ahead under Trump. The sky is the limit. Social media will get in line and then we'll all eat. Don't let anyone talk you out talk you into a blue funk. It's a great time to be alive. The rate of progress is almost incomprehensible. Of course, there are saboteurs and stragglers. There always are, but they can't win or even slow us down. All is well.